Well, Mr. Anger again, taking advantage of a snow day here in Pennsylvania to uh, accomplish several videos that I have had on my list for months to make. And uh, thankfully, we're getting several of them done today. And again, one of the concepts that I have to work with students a lot on is uh, the combined gas law. And then especially as it relates to standard temperature and pressure. So for this lesson, I'd like for you to have read up through page 30. And we're going to talk a little bit about density. And then we're going to talk about standard temperature and pressure. And we're going to solve one problem together here on page R, number 42 on page R. Density is defined as mass over volume, mass divided by volume. And we're going to have to use that formula to solve a few of the problems in this uh, lesson, a few pages. But um, if you have not seen the magic triangle before, let me introduce that to you. We're going to use it a lot in some upcoming paces, and you can use it even in math class and a lot of other ways. But basically, any math equation, math formula that has three quantities related by division or even by two things being multiplied together can be used in a magic triangle. Let me show you how this works. If I know, if I know the mass and I plug that in and then plug in the volume down here, I can cover up density. If I'm solving for density, I have mass over volume. So I would divide. If I wanted to find the volume, but I knew the mass and the density, Take mass, divide by density, see mass over density, so divide, and you'll have the volume. And then here's what's cool. If I want to solve for mass, density and volume are side by side. So I cover up mass, multiply density times volume, and we'll have the mass. We're actually going to do that. We're going to use that part in an upcoming problem here. If you look at page um, Q, there are a few problems for you to solve, um, and it's talked about standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature and pressure is a definition. Standard temperature is defined to be zero degrees Celsius, and then the standard pressure is defined to be 760 millimeters of mercury. Now I'm going to skip ahead, like I said, and we're going to do um, problem number 42 on the bottom of page R, and that's going to illustrate several things, even to help you go back and do problems 31, 32, 33, and some of the problems on page R. But looking now at problem 42, it says a sample of three, excuse me, of six liters of xenon gas is collected at 760 millimeters of mercury and 50 degrees Celsius. Now remember, when we do in Celsius, we have to convert it. The problem has to be in Kelvin before we can solve. So I have 323 Kelvin. Now it's asking what will the volume be. So I'm going to put a question mark next to volume. The standard temperature is right here, zero degrees Celsius, which remember that in Kelvin is 273. And then the standard pressure is 760. All right, so we have all of the numbers that we need. And now we just got to figure out an equation to solve these. So I'm going to start by cross multiplying T1, P2, V2 equals P1, V1, T2. And then again, thinking back to Algebra 1, to solve for one, one quantity here, I have to get rid of these. Because they're being multiplied, I have to undo multiplication with division, doing the opposite. So I'm going to divide by T1 and divide by P2. And I'll do the same thing over here, T1 and P2. So now I have a formula that says V2 equals, and these are the three quantities. So I'm going to set it up with parentheses, 
And then we're going to plug in the numbers. So P1 is 960, V1 is 6, T2 is the 273, T1 is 323, and P2 is 760. And remember the little tip in the previous uh, little lesson is multiply these three numbers together, write that number down. Multiply these two numbers together, put that underneath it. And then take your calculator and take the top number and divide by the bottom number, all right? If you just try to go this times this times this, divided by this, times this, your calculator is going to give you the wrong answer, all right? When you do that, you're going to get a volume. And uh, the volume is going to be 6.406. And that's in liters, okay? We keep, keep the units consistent and we keep the units as part of the answer. Now, you'll notice when you go to score that the answer says that it's 6.41 liters. You say, but I got 6.406. Remember, that has to do with significant digits. If you got this for your answer, you're good, all right? Uh, we could, we're not going to take the time to review the rules for significant figures, but that's why the bold answer is 6.41. Now, that's the answer to uh, 42, but if you turn the page, the next question at the top of the page, question 43, says, what is the mass of xenon in the previous problem if the density is 5.85? So I'm going to set up the magic triangle, and notice the mass is what we're solving for. The density the problem gives us is 5.85, so I'm going to plug that in for density. The volume we just found to be 6.406, and so to find the mass, very simple, multiply these two together, all right? and the answer will come out in grams. That's all there is to it, all right? As you go through the rest of the problems on page S, be careful, always write down the entire equation, list your variables, look at the problem and figure out what do I know? Maybe there's something held constant, okay? If that's the case, then you can just erase the V or erase the P or whatever's held constant. They'll give you everything you need to know, and there's one thing you've got to solve for. And then you just plug into the equation, be careful with your math, and you'll get the answer. Make sure you include the units as part of your answer. All right, I hope that was helpful to you. And if you do, you know, show your work, and then when you go up to the score key and you check your work, uh, look to see what they did. There's always a solution guide there, and maybe you just made a little mistake. Look at the work that they have. Compare it to the work that you have shown, okay? Don't just do it all in the calculator and in your head. Show your work, and then you can compare and see if you made a little mistake or if you totally missed it, all right? I hope this helps, and uh, that should wrap it up and get you pretty well ready for the checkup and the self-test. I hope you do well.